Welcome back, everyone, to Rick and Nick's Excellent Adventure. We are in Season 2. Rick, hard to believe we got renewed for a Season 2, but I I'm just excited to be here. I mean, it's just great being along for the ride. Uh, how are you feeling? What's cooking? What's new? Hey, I'm feeling good, and I'm excited about the, the blog here uh, today, Nick. I'm, I'm hungry to do this thing. You know, it's interesting. In the city of, I mean, I don't, I obviously haven't looked at the blog, so I don't know anything about <laughs> it yet. However, um, one of the things that I think is interesting is that there was an article in one of the Philadelphia magazines uh, that just came out talking about a new restaurant that just opened in Philadelphia, completely themed around bacon. Really? Oh, wow. That's uh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's it's kind of kind of crazy, isn't it? Like uh, completely bacon themed. I mean, again, I know that has nothing to do with the the blog this <laughs> week, but you know, why don't you take us in and 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 tell us about the blog? Yeah, sure thing. And I'd love to visit that restaurant. That sounds maybe that has to go on the agenda for our, our trip to Philly uh, this summer. So hey, a, uh, yeah, our blog for today. Idea. It's tight. Yeah, it's titled "Just Add Bacon." Bacon. I love bacon, and I am certainly not the only one. 268 million Americans eat bacon, and the average American eats about 18 pounds of bacon every year. In total, Americans consume about 5.6 billion, that's a B, billion pounds of bacon every year. That's a lot of bacon, right? And perhaps the obvious question with an equally obvious answer is, well, why? Well, as most of us know, bacon tastes really, really good. Prepared right, it's salty, sweet, smoky, and melts in your mouth. Did you know that National Bacon Day is December 30th? It's kind of fitting that it's one of the 12 days of Christmas, isn't it? On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six pounds of smoked bacon. Yes, the deliciousness that's, that's of bacon. It. <laughs> it does. It's almost amusing. Come to think of it, my favorite comedy act of all time is all about bacon. Jim Gaffigan's classic bacon skit is definitely worth a look or another look if you haven't seen it in a while. And we've got the URL uh, for you to click on if you go to uh, excellentadventure.com. At one point in the early skit, Jim says, to improve other food, they wrap it in bacon. While great on its own, bacon's true appeal is adding it to other foods. It's the perfect addition to just about any meal or dish. Bacon on your cheeseburger, bacon in your salad, bacon in your mac and cheese, bacon on your sandwich, and on and on and on. Bacon makes just about everything taste better and any meal more exciting, doesn't it? So what's the point, Rick? Isn't this supposed to be a blog about education and counseling? Well, as tempting as it is to just mic drop right here with a simple testimonial on bacon, maybe there is something more here for us to consider. What are your days at school or work like? Are they exciting? Are they flavorful, metaphorically speaking? Or have you been at it so long that the hours and days all kind of just blend together into a bland mush? Maybe it's not that you've been at it that long, but perhaps you're just exhausted from everything else on your plate and it's hard to enjoy much of anything. So what's my suggestion? Just add bacon. No, I'm not suggesting bringing in actual pork slices to work, although I'm not saying you shouldn't do that either. But what can you wrap around your work that you love? Can you play your favorite music as the kids come into class and as they leave the room? Can you adapt a math lesson to integrate your love for your favorite t TV show? How many square feet comprise the John Dutton farm anyway? Making your, maybe your bacon is knitting. I'll bet there are a few special kids who would love to stay after school and learn from you. Maybe your bacon is your love for God. The fourth Wednesday of September is always see you at the poll, or perhaps you can volunteer with your school's Fellowship of Christian Athletes group, or maybe start one if your school doesn't have one yet. Study after study affirms for us that one of the most important qualities of effective teaching is passion. Are you feeling passionate? If your lessons or sessions aren't quite as exciting as they used to be, or that you hoped that they would be, that's understandable, but we aren't robots or AI. We are humans with the unique ability to synthesize the things we love with aspects of our work that aren't as quite as thrilling as they used to be or as we might want them to be. For those of you who feel like you're at the top of your game, maybe personalizing your already strong content or delivery helps you to take that next step to go from good to great. Wherever you're at right now, I'd encourage you to make a quick list of the five things that are most exciting for you in your life right now. Those things are your bacon. How can you confidently integrate one or two of them into your daily grind this week or moving forward? Hey, maybe it's as simple as bringing a picture of your grandkids or your fur babies and setting it on your desk. 
Maybe it means sharing some of your experiences or passions with your students. Maybe it means redesigning your guidance lesson on emotional regulation with expressive music therapy techniques, whatever it looks like. I believe that adding bacon has the strong potential to improve your mood at and about your work and help make you significantly more effective at it as well. In case you missed it, the point is this. Just add bacon. I mean, bacon Knock and mic drop. is always the answer to everything. So <laughs> as a metaphor as well for passion, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great fit there for sure, isn't it? Um, it, it I have a question for you before um, you know we, I dig too deep into the content with you here. What at this particular time made you connect with this particular topic? Because this we we this, these are the doldrums of winter, right? Um, oh, yeah. January is one of the longest months of the year. In fact, I just saw the meme that said, "Can't believe it's January forty fifth already." Um, <laughs> and, you know, as we're it, it just it. Things can get kind of rough as we're in the stretch between January and spring yeah. break, whenever that occurs in school. So what was it that kind of brought you to the uh, the, the bacon, um, but more importantly, the passion piece, the reminders about those things? Yeah, Nick, and I think that's part of it too, right, is is just kind of feeling kind of the lack of sun <laughs> for, for me right now and, and just feeling that kind of, you know, I've not been feeling well just because of sickness and all those things, just this time of year, I think. Uh, kind of reminds me of how, gosh, the grind is not real enjoyable, but I can I can look to make it enjoyable. Again, what 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 can I integrate into what I'm doing without stretching too far, right, into something that's irrelevant or kind of watering something down? I don't I don't want to do that. But how can I kind of uh, uh, enhance my passion and my interest? Uh, how can I how can I do that kind of elevation myself? And if I can do that, I think it'll, it'll kind of uh, come across well and my students will appreciate it. So some of it is kind of self-care for me, right? It's, it's the things that I need to mm -hmm. do to make sure that I'm at the top of my game. Um, but it's something I noticed from uh, the students and that I work with and, and also from the school counselors I work with. Uh, some of it is about kind of the season being in the middle of the winter. And some of it is about a season in their career when they're feeling a little less enthusiastic than they used to because <laughs> they've been doing the same thing year after year after year. and kids always have problems. They never go away. And so am I really making a difference? You know, those kind of questions, I think, uh, yep. you know, you kind of hear and, and more than that you sense when you're working with experienced counselors is uh, that kind of, uh, I'm tired. And I, I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I'm making the difference I, I, that I imagined I would be making. I, I think th those are the kind of things that start creeping in uh, in a season of, of, of a career as well. There's two things. Um just from the tone, not even the content of the blog, but the tone of the blog made me um, reflect on a little bit. The first was there's a there's a genuine sense throughout the blog and the tone of that we're talking about adding a little bacon, adding a little spice, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that the person adding the bacon has to be the one to make the decision to add the bacon. And what that kind of also communicates to me, it's that I, when you're in the doldrums, right, when things aren't necessarily going great or you're getting a little bit bored or whatever, you know, whatever on that continuum there is, no one, no thing is just going to pull you out of that. Mm -hmm. You have to make an effort particular during difficult times of year, because I'm the, uh, when you mentioned like the, you know, the, uh, the, the short days, seasonal affect is like a big, I really struggle in the winter. It's just very, very difficult for, you know, you're, you're waking up in the dark, you're driving home in the dark, or what it's just, it's too dark overall. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes something might catch my eye and remind me, but in the end, it's always a decision that I make. Um, so that was an important part of, of reading through was just the reminder that at some point there has to be a trigger or a sign or something that reminds us that mm, it is getting a little stale. I need to do, I need to put some effort in. Uh, to, to, to get things going. And it doesn't just have to be school, right? Like, you know, sometimes you got to mm. add a little, this is, might come off sounding a little wrong, but you, a little bacon to the marriage <laughs> or, you know, yeah. I, get, you know, not literally, although, I mean, bacon never hurts in any <laughs> aspect, That's really. Right. Um, but, you know, 
there's effort that's involved there. It doesn't yeah, just magically get better. I have a little bacon to your workout, right, Nick? I mean, do something a little different because I'm sick of doing the same old lifts I do every day or standing on that, you know, walking on, running on that treadmill for how many ever did minutes. So yeah, mixing things up a little bit, integrating some things you enjoy or that would be new or different to kind of experiment with. I, I think you're right. I think doing those kind of things kind of helps us break out of plateaus and ha- helps break out of boredom, I think, that sometimes sets that, in. So- so true. Oh my gosh. And again, this time of year, I think it's an especially good reminder. The second thing yeah. that, and I don't know if this was intentional at all, but as I'm reading through and looking at it through the lens of a teacher mainly, um, or a school counselor, any school employee really, it also occurred to me that as if I am the educator and I am reflecting on the fact that currently I need to add a little bacon somewhere to get the get things going again. The thought then also crossed my mind that we might need to give an opportunity for the students to add a little bacon too. Meaning mm. if we're feeling that way, if if this time of year, if whatever it is is difficult, how about the way the students interact with our lessons? Just because we add some bacon doesn't necessarily mean that every student's going to connect to it. What's a way we can allow student agency to give them the opportunity to add some bacon of their own as well? Um, and there's a million different hmm. ways we can give student choice, you know, student choice. It's, it's, it's a thing. But that also kind of crossed my mind like, hmm, yep, it goes both ways, it goes in both directions. That's an interesting way to look at it, Nick, that I hadn't really imagined. But you're absolutely right. The idea of kind of differentiated learning and just consider what, well, what's ha- having equipping students with the knowledge of their own learning styles and how they can make adaptations to the way they do their projects or the way they're studying or the way they're paying attention. Um, to better fit their their natural learning styles. I mean, yeah, that it, it goes both ways. I think you're right. Yeah, and, and, and in truth, I mean, that's what education is, right? It's not just well, the teacher is delivering and the students receive. It's got to be both. Kind of have to be kind of working together towards the same goal for ideally uh, for students to learn and have success. So yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, such a such a good blog post overall, and uh, also a good reminder to just eat bacon, right? Yeah, bacon's pretty awesome. Yeah. What's your what's your favorite um if you could pick if you oh if you only could pick one variation of bacon to have for the rest of your life mm. and you got to pick right now right this second what would you pick I would pick pecan smoked rights bacon so the rights is the is the is the brand w rights right uh pecan smoked bacon that bacon is it's thick cut it's absolutely fantastic it is my favorite uh I'd pick that Okay all right. I think you? I would, you if I had to pick right now, oh, well, um, as I was asking you the question, I realized I'd have to answer it too, which would be tough. <laughs> I would probably right now go with the sometimes offered Dunkin' Donuts maple flavored honey smoked bacon side that they have. Oh, wow. Okay. Never had that. I think it's like All right. pepper honey smoked or something like that. Okay. Insanely, insanely delicious. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So good. That sounds fantastic. You know, right near us down here in Tennessee, Nick, I don't think you've ever, we've ever gone up here, but there's what's called Benton's bacon. They heavy smoke their bacon and actually they ship it to kind of the best restaurants all over the United States. So they, they feature Benton's bacon. Um, Benton's, so, yeah, okay. it's, I'm it's just a up. short little drive from us. Really heavy smoke. So you got to kind of be ready for that. And it's better right. with something than it is kind of on its own because it's a little overpowering. Okay. But that is what we're talking about, right? Is it, it's, a, it's a great add on. It's a great kind of. Uh, compliment to the other flavors. So, it, you know, I think of that compliment to the other flavors, Nick. I work with so many school counselors who are trying to find their identity in school counseling because so much mm-hmm. of so much of the field is standardized. You know, what they, it's all about the science of school counseling. And I try to kind yeah. of push, I don't try to push back against that, but I try to kind of expand on that and kind of help them to see that, hey, there's an art to it. <laughs> there's a creativity to it. There's you as a person that is critically important to it. I got one, uh, a graduate from a few years ago, she is the ladybug school counselor that everything's ladybugs with her and the students know her as the ladybug yep. lady and uh, they love her, love her dearly. And yeah, another former grad who, uh, who does pet, pet therapy, she brings her, her um, big puppy in with her every day and the kids know her, mm-hmm. you know, that's a key part of her identity and it's a way for her to bring bacon. I don't forget the puppy's name, but you know, she brings her dog with her and she loves doing that. And the kids love that. It's just kind of, Man, she's so effective. Uh, there, there's so many examples of of ways that people do that, and I just I think sometimes we miss we miss opportunities because we don't think, well, how could I combine some of the things that I love? 
And uh, just I'm going to encourage everybody to stretch a little bit and think about how can you kind of uh, integrate some of the things that you love into the work of teaching or counseling or whatever it might be or coaching. Well, I think that's a great challenge uh, for all of our listeners and to spread uh, throughout different aspects of your life as well. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing such a wonderful blog post. And uh, I guess we want to encourage our listeners to tune in next week. And if you're attending Rick's big session in Arizona coming up soon, you're in for a treat. It is going to be a classic. Ah, going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Nick.